Good morning. Glad to welcome all of you, all those who are watching online, and all our, can't talk, all our visitors and guests who are worshiping with us today. We're glad you're here, and it's good to see you. A um, couple of announcements. You might notice I'm up here, and Pastor Amanda is not anywhere in sight. Um, they are still at the beach and will be coming home with our youth today. So please keep them in your thoughts and prayers as they are on their way home. Um, I'm sure she would want me to mention the school supply drive. You'll see information about that in your go and serve and the, the boxes out there in the North X. And I'm also going to remind you that your second quarter financial statements are available on the table as near the outside door. So uh, please be aware of that. Also, with uh, Pastor Amanda not being here, I felt it was probably my responsibility to recruit all our worship volunteers, only to find out that Pastor Amanda recruited worship volunteers from last week for this week. So, if you think you have a responsibility and you get up and somebody else gets up, y'all work it out. <laughs> <laughs> or if something happens and nobody gets up, somebody get up. <laughs> so, anyway... Um, she may have told me that, but I didn't remember. So anyway, we'll, we'll get through it together. Let us rise and prepare for our worship with our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not followed your path, but have chosen our own way. Instead of putting others before ourselves, we long to take the best seats at the table. When met by those in need, we have too often passed by on the other side. Set us again on the path of life. Save us from ourselves and free us to love our neighbors. Amen. Hear the good news. God does not deal with us according to our sins, but delights in granting pardon and mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are free to love as God loves.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. to be with you. And also Let us pray. Benevolent God, you are the source, the guide, and the goal of our lives. Teach us to love what is worth loving, to reject what is offensive to you, and to treasure what is precious in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. City. Good morning, Jordan. How are you this morning? Good. Should we say hello to everybody at home looking online? All right, let's wave. Good morning. God be with you as he is with us. Yeah. Well, I have brought something with me. Oh my gosh, it's a whole lot. It is a whole lot. What do you, what do you say I just pour it out on the floor? Can I do that? No? Oh. <laughs> Oh, I was hoping I could. One at a time, that would take me so much. It's so much, it would take me so long to do that. How about if you help me pick it up afterwards? Then it would be okay? Okay, all right, we got a deal. We stuck a deal, I'm gonna pour this out, it's a lot. That, that is a lot. 
but kind of one thing, isn't it? I thought maybe we could play a game. Would you play a game with me? All right, let's play a game. The game is um, enough, not enough, or too much. Okay? Okay, is that enough crayons for everybody in the whole world? You think everybody in the whole world? How would I divvy that up? That, I don't think everyone in the whole world would get even a, a little tidbit of a crayon. Not even that. Really? Do you think it's enough for the whole world? Oh, <laughs> you believe in fish and loaves. Oh, God bless you. <laughs> okay. Well, okay. Is it enough for your whole family? That would be enough for your whole family. It wouldn't be too much? No? Okay. How about for you? Just you. Not your whole family. How about you? Would it be not enough or enough or too much? It would be too much for just you? That's very insightful. Thank you so much for sharing that. And I was wondering if you would like to take what is enough just for you, and then what should we do with all the rest? Put them away. How about, I got an idea. There's a box out in the narthex for back to school. Should we put it in the back to school box for the, the campaign so that those who don't have enough may have some? Thank you so much. Thank you so much that I, I, you have good answers, and I love your loaves and fishes. <laughs> okay, so I have one more thing with me that, that I would like to share with you. It's kind of like my finale, okay? Here it is. All right. A big heart. And what does, do you know what that says? Probably not yet. love. Do you think God's love is enough for the whole world? <laughs> I do too. It is enough for the whole world and God's love fills us up and spills out of us onto other people and it's a miracle. It really is a miracle. Thank you so much for being with me. How about a prayer as uh, we, as, and you're going to help me pick these in the box. Would you like to help me put them in the box after church? Okay, they'll be right there in the front pew and together we can do that, okay? The back to school and you take what you is enough for you, okay? All right, let's pray. You want to pray after me like Amanda does with you? Dear God, thank you so much for your love that fills us up and is enough. Help us always to show love, your love, to others. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Or how does Pastor Amanda say it? Amen. <laughs> Go in peace. Serve the Lord. The lesson today is a reading from Ecclesiastes. Vanity of vanities, says the teacher. Vanity of vanities, all is vanity. I, the teacher, 
When king over Israel and Jerusalem applied my mind to seek and to search out by wisdom all that is done under heaven, it is an unhappy business that God has given to human beings to be busy with. I saw all the deeds that are done under the sun, and see all is vanity and a chasing after wind. I hated all my toil in which I had toiled under the sun, seeing that I must leave it to those who come after me. And who knows whether they will be wise or foolish, yet they will be master of all for which I toiled and used my wisdom under the sun. This also is vanity. So I turned and gave my heart up to despair concerning all the toil of my labors under the sun, because sometimes one who has toiled with wisdom and knowledge and skill must leave it all to be enjoyed by another who did not toil for it. This also is vanity and a great evil. What do mortals get from all the toil and strain which they toil under the sun? For all their days are full of pain, and their work is a vexation. Even at night, their minds do not rest. This also is vanity. The word of the Lord. The psalm today is Psalm 49, verse 1 through 12. Hear this, all you peoples. Give ear, give ear all you who dwell in the world. You will fly the decree and lo, rich and poor together. My mouth shall speak of wisdom, and my heart shall meditate on understanding. I will incline my ear to a proverb, and set forth a riddle upon the harp. Why should I be afraid in evil days, when the wickedness of those at my heels surrounds me? The wickedness of those who put their trust in most of their great riches. One can never redeem another or give to God the ransom for another's life. For the ransom of a life is so great that there would never be enough to pay it. In order to live forever and ever and never see the grave, for we see that the wise die also, like the dull and stupid they perish, and leave their wealth to those who come after. Their graves shall be their homes forever, their dwelling places from generation to generation, though they had named lands, lands after themselves. Even though, though honor, they cannot live forever. They are like the beasts. Gospel according to St. Luke, the 12th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Someone in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the family inheritance with me. But he said to him, Friend, who set me to be a judge or arbitrator over you? And he said to them, Take care. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. Then he told them a parable. The land of a rich man produced abundantly. And he thought to himself, what should I do? For I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build larger ones. And there I will store all my grain and my goods. 
And I will say to my soul, Soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, be merry. But God said to him, You fool, this very night your life is being demanded of you, and the things you have prepared, whose will they be? So it is with those who store up treasures for themselves, but are not rich toward God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. The late comedian Jerry Clower often reminisced about his childhood in a small southern town. Being small town America, it impresses me with its giving and its sharing, he said. I remember when I was growing up, he continued, me and two of my friends, Joe and Ivy, were sitting at the country store. And we were sitting there hoping and praying that someone would give us a nickel where we could buy us a Coca-Cola. Well, Joe looked over at Ivy. Ivy, he said. What, Ivy answered. He said, if you had two million dollars, would you give me a million? And Ivy looked at Joe and said, man, if I had two million dollars, Joe, you want to know if I'd give you a million? Man, I love you. We are friends. If I had two million dollars, I would certainly give you a million of it. Certainly I would. I'd share it with you, Joe. And Joe said, Ivy, would you give me a pig? And Ivy said, now, Joe, that ain't fair. You know I got two pigs. <laughs> Today, our gospel reading is a story. I think a story about having two pigs. It's a story we know. It's a story we call the rich fool. I don't know of any text in scripture that worries me more than this one. A lot of what Jesus said worries me. A lot of what he said confronts me. But this one, this story that Jesus tells in our gospel reading today challenges me. I think challenges us. Maybe a little too close to home. Jesus has really gone to meddling now. That's how we feel almost any time faith and finances get tangled up together. We listen to Jesus saying things like, sell all you have and give it to the poor, and it's harder for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God than for a camel to go through the eye of a needle, and we ask ourselves, what's wrong with money? I mean, you've got to have it to survive. You've got to have money to put a roof over your head and food on your table. You've got to have money to provide for all the things you need, a little extra for some of the nicer things in life, and a little saved up for a rainy day or for retirement. What's wrong with money? Well, let's take another look at that rich fool. And as we do, let's notice the things he remembered and the things he forgot. Throughout the story, the only thing the rich fool ever seems to remember is himself. He counseled himself. He talked the matter over with himself. He held a dialogue and discussion with himself. He said, what should I do? For I have no place to store my crops. He goes on to say to himself, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build larger ones. And there I will store my grain and my goods. And then he begins to prepare for a life which apparently had absolutely no thought for anything except his own ease, comfort, luxury, and pleasure. You get the idea that this man is never really aware that anyone else exists at all. His whole focus is on himself. That's so different from what Jesus thought was important. Jesus calls us over and over to realize that we are a community, brothers and sisters in life together, and that we ought to think of more than just ourselves. 
Nowhere is that more clearly expressed than in the prayer that Jesus taught us, the prayer we say here week after week, Our Father, it begins. Our Father, give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us, lead us, deliver us. Jesus calls us to pray beyond ourselves, to think beyond ourselves, to live beyond ourselves, to notice and to respond to each other's needs with the abilities and gifts we have been given. In other words, with all we are. The rich fool remembered himself, but he forgot his neighbor's. In Bible times, it was understood that a bumper crop was God's way of providing for the poor. If his barns were too small to hold his superabundant crop, what he was supposed to do was to share the surplus with the many who lived in need. And I think God would tell us that the, that kind of sharing is how to have a meaningful, rich, full, and happy life. But this man's idea of happiness was to take his ease, to eat, to drink, and to enjoy himself. And I think that's where this parable hits us the hardest. From time to time, I find myself in conversations with some of you about places in the world where there is abject poverty, terrible, unsanitary conditions, people and even children starving for lack of food and dying for lack of medicines, and we talk about what we as Christians should do. And then I go home, welcoming the air-conditioned relief inside, kick off my shoes so that my feet can enjoy the carpet, grab myself a cold glass of tea from the refrigerator, and lean back in my recliner to watch a little TV. And never once, never once do I think about how foreign my world must be to those struggling for life. What air conditioning must seem like to those who don't have food. What carpet must seem like to those who are thankful to have a roof. What a refrigerator with a cold drink inside must seem like to those who struggle day after day to find a little clean water. How silly TV and recliners must be in the face of their day-to-day -day struggle to survive. And my guess is that you didn't think about those things either. And I have to tell you, the Bible says that they're the ones who struggle, but we're the ones in trouble. The rich fool remembered himself, but he forgot about his neighbors. The rich fool remembered himself, but he forgot time as well. Death really brings that home, doesn't it? There we all are, plugging along with life, tending to our harvests, feverishly working to build ourselves some new barns, when suddenly, unexpectedly, death crashes in. Someone we know is now someone we knew. Someone we saw just last week is now someone we won't run into at the grocery store anymore. And suddenly our priorities change. Somehow our barns don't seem so important. And somehow God suddenly does. And the point is that it shouldn't take a death to make us realize that. Jesus calls us to live like that, to live with those new priorities, to live in the awareness of death and life each and every day. Jesus calls us to live life remembering others and remembering God. That's the last thing the rich fool forgot. The rich fool remembered himself, but he forgot God. One of the most significant aspects of the parable is the one that we often miss, and it's found in the very first line. The land of a rich man produced abundantly, Jesus said. Because of that line, Jesus' story would have shocked his hearers. You see, in that day, it was widely believed that the state of your relationship with God was reflected in the material blessings God bestowed on you. The godly prospered, they believed. The wicked had trouble and suffered as a result of their wickedness. 
So when Jesus started a story about a rich man who had an especially bountiful harvest, everyone would have expected this man to be good, to be the hero of the story. But then the story turns, and we discover that appearances can be deceiving, and that the fool had everything but God on his mind. I think sometimes appearances can be deceiving among us too. I think a lot of times a lot of us put up a godly front. We say all the godly words, but our thoughts, our hearts, and our motivations are anything but godly. I've made God a part of my life, we smugly say. But you see, that's not the point. The point is not to fit God into your life, but to fit your life into God. All of it. All that God has given you. The rich fool was blessed. He had been given a bountiful harvest, a great gift with which to do good, but he forgot about God, and in the end he lost himself. And in the end, that's a danger we face as well. So what's wrong with money? Well, there's nothing wrong with money in and of itself, and it's even necessary for our lives and even the life of this church. What's wrong with money is when it makes us remember ourselves and forget about others, forget about time, and forget about God. What's wrong is when we forget about the greatest treasure of all that God has made us and claimed us as God's own. We are a people richly blessed. What are you going to do with the pigs God has given you? Amen. Gathered as God's people, we confess our faith.
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the perfection of the body, everlasting. Amen. In, with the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. God of grace, we have needed to come here today. We have needed to be here in your house, mostly just to be near you. Your love, your support, your help in life means so much to us, loving God. To have you to depend on, to know of your faithfulness, to feel your overwhelming love, you touch the very core of our lives with blessing and with your grace. Eternal God, lead us now that every moment of our lives might be lived with you. Lord, in your mercy. Compassionate Savior, you are with us and enrich all our joys and celebrations in life. Now reach in love to the many in our world who are so desperate for your help. Be with those who are struggling against flood waters and extreme heat or fire. Bless the sick, those who mourn, those who are hungry, afraid, alone, or forgotten. Bless families which are falling apart. Strengthen marriages where they are struggling. Be with those far from home, those serving our country and those who can't bring themselves to go home. Be present with us in all our joys and concerns and especially with all those whom we remember before you. Lord, in your mercy. And now, O oh God of mercy, abide with us in all of life. Work in us so that the work we do will be to your honor and glory. Fill us with faith and hope and love and lead us to live as your people always. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let us share God.
Let us pray. God of abundance, you have set before us a plentiful harvest as we feast on your goodness. Strengthen us to labor in your field and to equip us to bear fruit for the good of all. In the name of Jesus, amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection, open to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Let us pray. Life-giving God, through this meal you have bandaged our wounds and fed us with your mercy. Now send us forth to live for others, both friend and stranger, that all may come to know your love. This we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. peace. Serve the Lord. 